and welcome to our Eclipse Authority live stream. Yep. All the information you need, we're going to go over it again, take your questions. It's, this is a casual, casual environment for it. Mm -hmm. yeah. But now that we are getting, and we were just trying to count, it's four days and, uh, what, 18 hours, it, something like that, however you want to count it. But, you know, all the years of planning that have been going into this and thinking about it, it's like, it's finally here and it's around the corner. It's kind of hard to believe in that aspect. It is. Because I remember seven years ago thinking, oh man, that's going to, you know, it's so far away, but it'll be here and now that it's here. And we have got Eclipse Chasers coming around. You talk to someone from New Zealand. Yeah. People are coming from all over the world here. It's true. And I remember in 2017 when we were standing out there and we said, just wait, just seven wait. years is going to be awesome. <laughs> uh, by the way, we want to thank everyone joining us. Uh, we're doing this on several platforms. We are on KSAP Plus, on YouTube. Uh, we're on both of our apps. So we want to be with you as uh, this event unfolds. And we'll be doing that on Tuesday. So we'll be on all your devices and you can enjoy the eclipse along with us yeah. wherever you're going to be. Yes, indeed. And by the way, it's not just us this evening. Yes. We are going to class it up a little bit because Mia and Sarah were just out at a, an eclipse uh, glasses giveaway and they are walking in here right now. They just got in the newsroom. And as a matter of fact, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, big in. round of applause. There they are. I love it. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> still, here, squeeze in. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Squeeze in. Get right in here. Yeah. We All right, so how, was, how was the giveaway? The giveaway was awesome. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Can you hear me okay? okay. I hope I turn my mic on too. You're, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, there, is my mic on? You can talk about All right, it. I'll yeah. talk. Hey, hey, there we go. We're all friends here. <laughs> test, okay. test. So, yeah, the giveaway was great, Mia. It was wonderful. Everybody was so excited. The They got there very early, wow. very in, anticipating. You know, they're excited about the glasses. It was a great time. They're excited for the other ones that we have tomorrow and Friday. Where were too. you guys? We were at my Melrose off of Southwest, Southwest Military. Military. Okay. Southwest yeah. Military. And then so you and I tomorrow night. Yeah. Be out at the park. Right. Oh, Five here's to seven. A look at the video. Oh, there we oh. go. Oh, that was Ariel. Oh, she was my so gracious. cute. She was so precious. Oh, <laughs> she's excited. And look at Mike. Mike has some eclipse glasses now. <laughs> oh my Sweet. gosh. Are those the biggest ones that we've ever had made? I, I think, think so. Probably so. <laughs> oh, it was a great crowd, y'all. Well, we do have two more giveaways. You'll be out at yeah. uh, which park do you? It's uh, it's on Padre Drive, so okay. it's out it's out near the missions. We'll we're have doing it with info. Metro Health. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And then we'll, I'll be we'll at IKEA on Friday. Yeah. And, and of course, we're going to talk about, in detail about the forecast. Right. Yeah. That's really what we're going to spend a lot of time on. Here. <laughs> Why couldn't we have moved this to today or tomorrow? Or Why something? couldn't it be in July or August? <laughs> yeah. Fair. Yeah. yeah. So. Fair. So we should probably start with the basics. So yeah. exactly what time do things start? When does totality start? When do you guys take it away? What do you? What, what's? What's? What are the details? The biggest details, in my opinion, are that you know from 12 noon to about three o'clock. That's the entire eclipse experience. That's when we're gonna start to see the moon move in front of the sun. But totality will happen around 1.30, give or take a couple of minutes, depending on where you live. And a couple of seconds too, and depending on where yeah. you are, yeah. And, and it'll last anywhere from about a minute to upwards of four minutes in parts of the hill country. And of course, it's going to happen sooner down there along the Rio Grande. It's as coming the, in from Mexico. Yeah. As, yes, right. as the moon traverses up to the uh, the northeast, which is always kind of funny to kind of put wrap your head around because you think the moon rises in the east and sets in the west. Yes. Well, why doesn't it? Well, no, but actually, it rotates around the Earth from west to east, exactly. and the spin and, and all that stuff. And that was one of the questions that we were getting a lot in from viewers: was if the sun rises in the east and sets in the west, why is it that the eclipse path is from the southwest to the northeast? So there you go. And my question to all of you again, have any of you been through a total solar eclipse nope. before? No. This is all our first time. We're, we're doing it with you guys for the yeah. first time. We, and, we and have, we're in an annular correct. eclipse right. yeah. in October, the ring around the yeah. sun. This right? is different. Not the yeah. same though, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the impacts. The impacts yeah. are way yes. different. So talk a little bit about the impact difference between the annular well, and the total. It, well, so the annular, you needed the glasses the whole time. The total, if you're in the path of totality and you know the safe time to take your glasses off, we do have a map coming for that. You can safely take them off and then look directly at the eclipse. It will be safe to the naked eye if you know what you're doing. That's basically the way I want to put it. Yeah. You know what you're doing, you've done your research, it can be safe to the naked eye in certain areas at certain times. You'll first see with your glasses on, the partial eclipse start to shrink, you'll get a diamond ring, ring effect. I oh, love that description. That's awesome. Yeah. Because you'll have a little thin line around, but then one bright spot of the sun still showing. 
Then it turns quickly into Bailey's beads, which most of us probably won't notice. And then you'll see a red outline around the sun, which is the one part of the moon's atmosphere. And then the you, moon's atmosphere. The, no, the sun's atmosphere, yeah. sorry. Yes, the sun's atmosphere. And from there, then you can see even some of the solar, you know, wisping, wisps. wisps of a different part of the sun. Now that would be an ideal, perfectly clear Right. situation. Right. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. We're going to get in, we're going to get into the cloud situation later. <laughs> yeah. when it's time to get into that. Let's I do talk wanna, about the good stuff first. I do want to address another thing. I, I'm sure a lot of people are seeing on social media that there's going to be a lot of traffic, there's going to be a lot of people and that you need to be worried about things like gases. That's right. Really, we don't want to put that panic out there. And, and, and you know that, uh, do you want to fill up your car maybe yeah. before the weekend? Sure. Beat the Christmas rush. But you don't, you don't need to sweat this one out. That, yes, there's going to be some people in San, more people in San Antonio than usual. Yes. Uh, but this is uh, not something you have to panic about. Right. Yeah. You don't have to rush to HEB to get no. supplies and yeah. anything like that. No. Not clear like that. out the shelves. Um, and depending on the forecast, that could, you know, and, and how it changes, because it will change as we approach Monday. That could also have an impact on the quantity of people in certain spots because some of these people came here because of the greater odds of a clear sky, climatologically speaking. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are ready to shift course and drive to an area last minute that would be more favorable for a totally clear sky. So there's just a lot of unknown variables. Sure. All we the way do up know until that it happens. probably the smaller roads in the hill country could get a little yeah busy. Uh, mm -hmm. So you want to keep that in mind. And by the way, it's not just us. This is traversing the country. So this goes all the way up towards Maine. There's going to be people flocking to the path of totality, not just here in Texas, but all the way up into the northeast and from Eagle Pass all the way up to Caribou, Maine. It yep. spans yep. Yeah. a large 15 states, I think. Pretty impressive. Yeah. yeah. And the average width of that path is 115 miles, which is a lot wider than usual yeah. Yeah. for a total solar eclipse because the moon's a bit closer. Right. So. The difference between yes. this and what happened back in October because the moon and yes. the numbers, so you know, the sun's 400 times bigger, but 400 times farther. But the moon's orbit is not a perfect circle around the Earth. So in October, it was a little further away, so just that much smaller in the sky so it didn't cover quite as much but now it's just it's perfect and how amazing is it that parts of south central texas in our area are kind of have been in the crosshairs of both of these within six months time exactly that's and amazing exactly and the, the biggest thing that people are concerned about is clouds but there's one way oh, you yeah. can view the total solar eclipse without any clouds <laughs> and that's to be up in the stratosphere <laughs> yeah. in the stratosphere and there are actually certain people that are booked flights oh, yeah. Yeah. to yeah. fly yeah. along the path of the total yeah. solar eclipse expensive tickets but probably worth it I yeah mean, it's gonna be cool or from private jet i mean that people yeah. do that. what i've been wondering though is i wonder what the timing is going to be because the eclipse obviously goes a whole lot faster than a jet it's traveling you know anywhere from what 1600 2000 miles per hour as it traverses a jet goes yeah. at maybe 500 or a little bit better than that so do they wait and take off before and let it catch up and surpass like that or we've got an article about it on case <laughs> there you go <laughs> wait isn't isn't your dad a pilot Can he you, is let's he get is. him on I the need line to call him up down. real quick like hey yeah. i don't think he's doing one of those flights though but. can he borrow a plane <laughs> probably not but we could always ask yeah <laughs> it, 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 right now by the way th these are kind of great points that we're bringing up we're going to be calls. answering some questions so what we want you to do is interact with us you can get on youtube or uh, you can submit questions several different ways. If you have questions about the eclipse, we want to know what they are, and we'll, we'll try to answer some of those coming up. And I think we, we well, have some. we've so. got one here, right here. There you go. Can we still see it if it rains? You know, you won't see the actual eclipse, right? You won't see the shadow and all that, but it'll get very, very dark outside like it's midnight. So it'll have a more significant effect on the darkness factor but you won't see the cool atmosphere of the sun and all right. of that. It'll just make it look like it's midnight for some yeah. And for darkness minutes. will fall quicker than it's yes. ever fallen yes. for any sunset or anything you've experienced. It'll yeah. be pretty quick yeah. during cool. totality. Yeah. We're gonna take a little bit yep. of a break here and we'll come back, right back in just a couple of minutes, stick around. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> BRB.
Okay, we're back. And one thing we wanted to do now is uh, talk a little about, we're doing the forecast. So we wanted to talk a little bit about what's yeah. going to unfold with the clouds. I know it's been a concern. It's been a topic of conversation between all of us over the last several oh, days. Yeah. And yes. we put together some graphics. So we'll pull up one of our computers here. And the hard time getting it to school. Or we're going to. No, I got it. Okay, here we go. Oh, look, we can do the question first. We can do a question first. There you go. Will schools close for this <laughs> event? If, if your school is closed, you'd know by now. Justin, you've got some experience with this as of today. <laughs> yes. Um, uh, my kids' school announced today that they're, they're closing. They yeah. originally oh. had plans to have everyone out with glasses, and now they've decided to give the kids the glasses and send them home for the day. And the reason was, was traffic. They were a little worried about traffic. Traffic, yeah. And, from everybody I've talked to who has ever been to a total solar, a lot of times the traffic is just the worst right at the end. Because right after it's okay, mm -hmm. it's done, let's go. Everybody hits the road at the same time. Yeah. And so it's the traffic getting home. And right. And, and you think about going there, if you live on the southeast side of town and you want to go to the northwest side yeah. of town, going to the hill country, yeah. just allow yourself more extra time. Yeah. Because you and probably a whole bunch of your friends are going to be having the same idea too. Yeah. And we've never been through this, so we're not 100% sure what traffic's going to look like. This is purely a guess, but that's that's what we're thinking. There, okay. yeah. there are many uh, Hill Country school districts yeah. that are closed. Yes. Yeah. And, and so I know, oh, there we go. Yeah, there, there are dist district closures. We've got Bandera ISD, wow, Bernie wow. ISD, Brackett ISD, Center Point ISD, Comal ISD, Hondo, Hunt, Ingram, Jordanton, Kerrville, Colleen, Medina, Medina Valley ISD, South San ISD, and Temple ISD. And UTSA and Texas State, uh, just heard, have suspended classes during the eclipse. Yeah. Give yeah. yeah, everybody a chance to yeah, well, it, get their heads. It's also a, it, it's a good learning experience. Right. Yeah, it you know, is. Go outside, it's a once in a lifetime for many of us, unless you're an eclipse chaser and you chase them around the world, and you, know, you do that, which most of us don't have the opportunity to do that. Yeah. So I think that's a, it's a good thing to do. Um, School-wise, there may be some more last-minute decisions, but that will come down. And they the may wait and see what the forecast is going to be like once we get a better grip yeah. in the next few days and over the weekend on the cloud cover, too. And yeah. part of me thinks maybe it's a liability thing in case a student takes their glasses off and looks right up into the sun. Yes. Even though we've signed That's waivers. Fair. Yeah. I just have a hunch. Yeah, that could be part of it. <laughs> and There's again, no we've got that whole list up on KSAT.com along with a ton of other Eclipse resources. So if there were to be any more closures in the days ahead, you can bet that we'll have that up there as well. You know, and back when you, you know, go ahead, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, me and I will be at a school. We will. Yes. Uh, in ISD school during the event, they've actually got things really prepared. They're giving away glasses to the kids. So some schools are, are celebrating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and going back to what you were talking about very quickly about when it's total when it's in totality you can take a glass off very quickly but then don't forget put them back on because as it's getting out of it mm -hmm. same situation be on the yeah glasses 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh boy okay right. well, now right. we go here we go uh -oh. adam you're on the spot man so, take it away it's fine i love this so we've been looking at a lot of data and information and using our experience i think my i think my and, mind is and the history um, do we have a adam is on the weather mic if yeah, we can bring mic. up the weather mic i'm on weather mic weather mic Got it. Uh, here, I'll tell you what, let me come over to you because I know my mic works and we're still queuing up can the he, weather. Can you hear it? I can just swap mics. Oh, there we go. There. Now we got it. Okay, you guys got it. Yeah, good. Um, so we've been looking at all the data and everything and DProg, DT, all this stuff and all the important things. And here's our going forecast right now. We thought we'd give it to you just in terms of percentages. There is a 0% chance we will have a totally clear sky with perfect view. That's not going to happen, unfortunately, because of the weather pattern we're going to be in. And that yeah. weather pattern, let me just take this one off then. All right. And then use, because yeah, this is yeah. the important we'll, part. We'll this very quickly. So take mine, OTT2 is what he's on now, Mike Watt. Yeah, I'll give it, oh, there we go. There okay. we go. Um, all of our information, all of our experience, DProg DT, what I was talking about there. Wanted to give it to you in more of a percentage. So, of a total of 100%, right? 0% chance of a totally clear, perfect eclipse day. We just, we don't think that's possible. 60% chance, so odds favor, it's gonna be visible in between and through some clouds. There's a 40% chance that we can't see any of the eclipse because of low gray clouds. It'll still get dark outside during totality, but that 40% chance would be that we couldn't see it through any of the clouds and it would just be basically cloud cover. Of course, these numbers 
not just subject, subject to change, but will be changing very likely in the days ahead and then even some hours leading up to it. And this isn't clicking along for me. Maybe you can get a better range. Um, thank you. Uh, so this will be changing because I know you think, well, come on, right? We've got all this fancy technology. I can do anything on my phone. Why can't you, you know, know what the clouds are going to be like? Hour by hour cloud forecasts of cloud type and extent of coverage is impossible until you're about a day or two out and then sometimes even just hours out. Science of meteorology and our technology just isn't at that point yet. Here's what we do now. We're going to have this big upper level swirl over the southwestern U.S. Now, whenever we get this pattern, that's what I talk about with experience and what we know with these patterns, we get this southwesterly flow aloft. That means high level moisture coming in off the Pacific almost guarantees high thin clouds overhead. Almost every time we have cirrus clouds streaming overhead in this pattern. Sometimes the cirrus can get layered on top of each other, but usually these are fairly translucent cirrus clouds that you can see the sun through. Like, you know, when you get that halo around the sun, it's because of those cirrus clouds. So that we think is pretty much a slam dunk. The big wild card is, the big wild card for the viewing is low clouds working in. And this comes down to humidity here at the ground because we'll actually have a cold front that moves in and that cold front is going to push the humid cloudy air along the coast for the day Sunday. If, if the eclipse was Sunday, it would be perfect. It would be ideal. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Sunday, 7 p.m., the humid air, which causes a lot of low clouds, is along the Gulf Coast. That cold front dissipates. It loses its strength. The wind off the Gulf picks up. The humid air moves back into the eclipse path. And by Monday morning, whenever we have that kind of a pattern with that humidity flowing off the Gulf, it often, not always, often leads to a period of low gray clouds overhead where you know it looks like it could rain at any moment but it never rains one of those situations the key is these low gray clouds are always a question mark because they can clear as early as 9 a.m or they can stick around as long as 1 2 p.m and that comes down to usually day of forecasting sometimes the day before so that's one of the difficulties here so what we're watching for in the days ahead, when exactly are those low clouds going to clear and where exactly are they going to set up? How thick are they going to be? And how long is it going to take the sun to lift and burn those off? So when clearing actually happens, when and where clearing happens first, sometimes the clouds will hold tight in just a small part of our area for a little bit longer. And that could last through the eclipse, but elsewhere have pretty good viewing. We will know more specifics by the weekend. Like I was saying earlier, science of meteorology and our technology just isn't there yet to give you those hour by hour specifics. So we will be fine tuning and tweaking the forecast. Check back in for the updates. We have it on the weather app every update we do. We did do some climatology of the last 10 years and uh, you know climatology favors sunshine but notice just even over the past 10 years, one, two, three, four fairly cloudy and gray days um, and the amount of sky typically covered by clouds is 40%. Remember when we said that we could have, you know, some viewing through the clouds? Uh, usually we have 40% of our sky covered by clouds on April 8th. That's just for the day. Here's type of totality. You guys want to get in on this one? Switch it over? Do the exact, well, exact times of? Sure. And, then to, and then you're going to yeah. do the longest, the, the interactive map. Anyway. Sure. Justin, well, I just say, take uh, this away. One thing I want to point out is that you'll notice that there is not uh, the totality over the southeast side of San Antonio County is not there. So if you can find your way into the path of totality, that would be awesome. You if, have to if it, you want to experience yeah, it. Yeah, and, and Sarah made a really good point today. If there are clouds, that's an if, then you're really not going to see much if you're not in the path of totality with clouds. It will go a little darker, but not by much. No, not by much at all. Ninety-nine percent doesn't count when it comes yeah. to a total solar eclipse. <laughs> it's it's true. You have to be 100%. Yeah. yeah. It's worth taking the small drive up I-10 West or 90 West. west. Or, or go to the airport. Yeah. yeah. Go to McAllister Park even. It'll be brief. Yeah. Um, you know, some of these areas, you, we have these interactive maps and you can zoom in. I'd love to be able to show yeah. that interactive map mm -hmm. that I made for folks. And, and also mind. just looking at that map too, yeah. you don't just have to go out in the hill country. No. 
You can go up 281 up to the north. You can go up to the north. Go to Ingram Park Mall if you want. Yeah, definitely. I think Ooh. that's an option. So I've got this interactive map here. You can come in here if you want. <laughs> I made this interactive Hey, hey. what? Hey. You're fine. It's a, it's a gray out here as my head gets in the way of the camera. So. Okay, so I made this interactive map on ksat.com. Uh, you can zoom into your neighborhood uh, or even your location. Again, this clearly shows that only half of San Antonio is in the path of totality. The further you zoom in, you'll also notice that a, a, a number pops up. That's how long totality will last. The further north you go, the longer totality will last, the further west you go. Also, if you need a little bit of extra help to know exactly where you live on the map, I got this handy dandy search button here. Um, don't worry, I'm not going to type in my address, but I can tell you that my house is in the path of totality for about uh, two and a half, three minutes or so. So again, that's available on ksat.com, so you're going to want to check it out. Uh, I did, went back to my coding days, guys. I like that look, Adam. Come on in. <laughs> Yeah, good camera, job with so. that. That's yeah. It's very helpful. I'll tell you how many times I've referenced it. Because well, I'll tell, you, tell you what, real quick, let's take some YouTube questions. I pulled it up here. Uh, yeah. One of the questions, I found this interesting. I, honestly, I did not do a lot of research on this, but they're asking, is it going to be clear enough to where we can see Comet 12P? And I read a little bit about this. There is... And I don't know that that's going to be the case. I'd have to see exactly where it is in the sky. And yeah. I, I would venture to say with clouds, probably not. Yeah. But I know the the planets that are out are a lot brighter and more visible than, but remember, it's going to be like twilight. It's not going to be pitch black either. They're just things that are out there would be more visible. So I think with the clouds, it'd be difficult to see it. Yeah. Uh, here's another one. Uh, they said, I'll be with my three-year-old grandson. Any advice? Obviously, uh, I'll put some glasses on him, but what, with little kids, what are, what's some advice? Uh, I, I would think with little kids, as fidgety as they are, and three-year-olds, are yeah. they gonna, if they're not used to keeping them on, are they gonna wanna keep them on? True. I mean, if you can make a game, you know, get a rubber band or something like that, uh, yeah. do what you can, but don't. I've, yeah, be extra and I've careful. got an Eclipse activity that they can do. They can mm -hmm. make the uh, pinhole projectors. We'll show you how to do that later, yeah. but that's a great thing to do with your kids, too. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, okay, I think we're gonna go ahead and toss to another break here, and then we'll be back. More questions. Uh, some more questions and more information for you. Welcome back. We're so excited for the <laughs> eclipse. You know, this is the first total solar eclipse that passed over San Antonio since 1397, before San Antonio even existed. <laughs> it's so hard to wrap I your know. brain around. It's yeah, I just wonder incredible. what people back then, and they didn't know yeah. about science, thought what was happening. What, you know. I did a great, pa a great story about it. Mm -hmm. So check it out. Basically, this is the like sun, and, yeah, the sun <laughs> and the moon were faces of God. Mm -hmm. So it'd be like the two faces of God coming together, which just would have blown your mind, I think. <laughs> uh, I think uh, we, we're, we're going to hear from an astronaut, maybe? Yes. Okay, let's listen to that real quick. What is your favorite thing about what you do? I think it's um, about the goals of what NASA has. It's about um, making new discoveries. It's about solving challenges. It's trying to understand more about what humans can learn about the space environment and, and really then how to bring benefits back to Earth from that as well. Okay, I got to tell y'all, I was sitting at my desk. So this was an interview that Tiffany Huertas did with Ellen Ochoa. She's an amazing astronaut, the first Latina astronaut, I believe. Mm -hmm. 
and I was sitting at my desk and Tiffany just comes out real quick. She's like, Mia, come here, come here. I had no <laughs> idea what was happening, ran inside, and there is Ellen on the screen How just cool. talking about her experience and everything. And you know, we started talking about the eclipse. I think Justin, you went in and talked to her too. Yes, I actually missed uh, part of the noon <laughs> show. I got in trouble with the music because I was in there talking to, to an astronaut. That's a, that's a good excuse. Though. It was worth it. Yeah, she also yeah. was just so excited about it, as many people are. Yeah. I mean, you kind of just go out, everyone at the eclipse classes giveaways that we've mm -hmm. been at. I mean, as you said, this is the first one since the 1300s. It's incredible. Out at uh, at the the Rock, mm -hmm. where Fiona and I are going to be, UTSA's got a big setup out there, and bring kids in, even from the south and southeast side, where they wouldn't see the, yeah. the totality out there. Yeah. And they have folks from NASA here, folks that work at James Webb telescope. They've got uh, a woman, one of the doctors who was involved in the lander that just landed on the moon with that. And so they're using this obviously as the event, but to get kids really interested in space and they've got everything else and they've got so many uh, the one professor from UTSA that's kind of running the show, he goes, yeah, all my friends are coming in from around the world. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, yeah Chris. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Can you imagine the uh, the average IQ of that place? And, <laughs> oh, okay. uh, uh, including you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, just put yes. it before or after there. he shows up. <laughs> right. I'm going to be, <laughs> boy, am I going to be, uh, feel uh, even uh, dumber than I. It's going to be amazing. I mean, it's bad enough being around though. these four here, you know, <laughs> I, but then. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, tell you what, let's take a few more questions. Uh, Colton, who's kind of running the show over here. Colton. Uh, throw us some questions. Okay, so first question, do glasses from the October eclipse still work for this eclipse? Do glasses from the October eclipse still work for this eclipse? Yes. yes. As long as they're not torn yes, or scratched. big scratched up or anything. Like make sure they weren't put through the ringer, but yes. Yeah, if they're work. in your back pocket and then you put your jeans in the yeah. right. washer literally through the ringer, <laughs> they're not going to work. And double check to make sure they have the proper uh, code. ISO. ISO. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good question. Uh, another question? Okay. Can I put the glasses in front of my lens on my cell phone camera okay. and use that to take a photo of the eclipse? So I don't know if you heard that, but they asked, can you put the mm -hmm. glasses in front of your camera when you're videoing? I'm assuming a lot of people will do it on an iPhone. Is that safe to do? Is it a good idea? It works. It works. Yeah. It does. Yeah. Don't, but the, don't, the thing is, is, say you're holding your phone and you have the solar filter above it and you get it and your phone is blocking the sun. If you move that phone just a smidge, like I did with this studio light, you will hurt your eye. Yeah. So you have to be like extremely careful and kind of know what you're doing with it. But in totality, if you know what you're doing and you're in one of those parts of totality and it's during exact totality down to the second, you could actually take a picture without the solar filter. Yeah. Okay, one Can more I question. View the eclipse with binoculars? Can I view the eclipse with binoculars? I've done it before, you, only if you have proper filters on those mm -hmm. binoculars. And you, ca you cannot take your glasses and put binoculars over them. The filter has to be in the front of the binocular, otherwise you're gonna burn the insides yes. of that. Great question. Okay. Yeah, good question. And one so, thing so don't use binoculars unless you already have the setup for it. Yeah, right. that's good advice. Uh, one thing's for sure is we know a lot of people will be coming here. We mentioned this earlier. Uh, I was actually, I, I found, uh, this sounds kind of weird, but I've, I found a lady on, on Facebook mm -hmm. <laughs> who was traveling uh, just randomly. It was an ask a question to San Antonio. Or Slide into your DMs. <laughs> no, I did not do that. <laughs> uh, but uh, she, she was actually looking for a ride uh, to Stonehenge there in Ingram. Yeah. And yeah. she was from New Zealand. So I, I messaged her and said, hey, tell me about, you know, uh, your trip and what you're doing. So this is... Uh, this is that uh, traveler for the eclipse. Take a listen. I found New Zealander Carolyn Tamarcos by chance on the San Antonio Facebook page, Ask a Local. She had posted there about catching a ride from San Antonio to Stonehenge 2 in Ingram for the eclipse. Which, you know, God bless the Americans. We can't make it to Stonehenge. So, oh, we'll just build one here. <laughs> so it's it's a 90% scale replica. And as you would know, being a meteorologist, that the eclipse path is 70 miles wide. Right. Well, this thing is bang smack in the middle. So I'm like, that was purpose built for the 2024 eclipse. Tomarcos is no eclipse rookie. She made the cross Pacific trip to Missouri in 2017. The full eclipse is just mind blowing. The experience assured that she'd be traveling back for this one. All the crickets start chirping and all the birds start doing their dusk chirp and and, and then in the totality, the birds all go to sleep. And then like two minutes later, you can hear the birds sort of going, what the heck, chirp, chirp, what, what? 
it left her wanting more. So Tamarcus began planning for the 2024 eclipse, knowing she needed to move fast. I very early got on and booked my flight from Auckland to Houston, which I picked up for 760 New Zealand dollars, which is like 500 American. It was so cheap. Although the flight back, she says, will not be nearly as cheap. Neither were many of the accommodations. Originally, I'd planned to stay in Ingram, which mm -hmm. when I first discovered this town, I think it has three Airbnbs and they're like $50, $60 a night. And I was like, oh, sweet, I'll stay there. Yeah. And then when I went to book one for the night of the eclipse, they were three and a half thousand dollars a night. So I thought, oh, there was an RV park half an hour down the road, which was like $28 a night for an unpowered site. Mm -hmm. $15,000 a night for an unpowered campsite for the night of the eclipse. Eventually, she discovered she could camp at Stonehenge 2 for $140 per ticket for four people. Which brings us back to that post. She was offering a barter, two tickets for a ride. She quickly got a message. Jordan um, reached out to me, and he's, he's actually an Englishman, but he's lived in San Antonio for 15 years. And he went, yeah, I can, I can give you a ride, not a problem. Everything fell into place. Tomarcos won't be alone, by the way. Visitors will be coming from across the world to San Antonio to experience the incredible eclipse. 360 degree twilight is what it's like. Yes. Now, usually you have twilight on one side, you know, one horizon. It's, it's all around. And then the animals react like she yeah. was talking about. So that was something, yeah, we know what a rarity this is. We've got thousands of people coming to Texas, to parts of our area, which is great. But we were also touching on earlier the science community mm -hmm. and the researchers. This is such a cool opportunity, especially here locally, to conduct all of this research that a lot of people don't have the opportunity to do. So I got to talk to some folks from UTSA, some folks at the zoo, about how animals could react, take a look at what they had to say. This is so cool, I feel like we're in our physics lab. From the lab, to the outdoors, and even to outer space, researchers across the nation and right here in the Alamo City are using the total eclipse as a rare opportunity to conduct research. No matter what part of the astrofield you're in, it's a big, a conglomerate, a big gathering of the science community. Finest Stribling is a research assistant at UTSA who is currently studying the life cycle of a star in Stardust, his studies use light from the sun on a day-to-day -day basis to figure out what's happening within those stars. And it's just one example of the many research opportunities the Stardust Group at UTSA is conducting during the eclipse. They're doing a lot of uh, things with insects and how insects interact. And we're doing a lot of things for the, uh, the visually impaired community and how we're using like, textiles so they can feel what's going on even though they can't see and things like that. Across town at the San Antonio Zoo, zookeepers and researchers like Dr. Charles Ritzler will be keeping a close eye on how certain animal species respond to the eclipse. Because so little is known about how animals react to eclipses housed here in zoos. Ritzler says there was one previous study done during the 2017 solar eclipse when the path of totality crossed over the Riverbank Zoo in Columbia, South Carolina. Their findings? That animals started to prepare for their end of day activities. Gorillas were seen walking closer to their sort of indoor keeper areas. Elephants were seen getting less active. So that was our, our hypothesis here at the zoo. This is the home of the flamingos. Around 1.30 p.m. on April 8th, zookeepers and researchers like Charles are going to be monitoring their behavior to see if they respond to the dimming sky. And while that's just a taste of the research being conducted locally, the opportunities continue in an even bigger way on a national scale. Enter NASA. So back in 2017, the sun was in a solar minimum, so it was not as active. But right now we're in a solar maximum. That solar maximum is one of the reasons why this year's total eclipse is different from the one seven years ago. NASA chose a handful of experiments to conduct during this year's eclipse, from getting clearer pictures of the sun's corona to figuring out if radio or GPS signals could be affected. Their findings may be used in future NASA missions and space exploration. And with the next total eclipse not taking place until 2044 in the United States, it's a rare opportunity that connects researchers from all over the nation to those right here in San Antonio. Yep, very, very cool. And I believe the Southwest Institute of Technology, they're also conducting some research. They've got like 35 stations from Eagle Pass all the way mm -hmm. to Maine, where they've trained the people that are going to be looking at telescopes, observing it, observing it all. It's going to be really, really cool. Yeah. A lot of people excited Science about it. Science is going to be at work Ooh. in many different ways <laughs> during this. Yeah.
Yeah, the, just like basically like what is an eclipse? It's when the moon passes in front of the sun. And can only happen when the moon is in its new phase. Intr yes, yeah. exactly. Yes. And it's like lunar eclipse can only happen in the full phase. So yeah. right. it's got to time out perfectly. We yeah, right. are going to take another break and we'll be back very soon. See you in a bit. Hello. One thing, what exactly is the total solar eclipse? I mean, we've been talking about it for so yeah. long, we just, you know, assume everybody knows what it is. Let's just go over that, yeah. the basics again, really quickly here. And it's when the moon passes between the sun and the earth. And our, we have a graphic for it in uh, Max 1 right now. We've got the graphic for it. If you can, can you pull it up it on up. this, guys, on the yeah. screen? Oh, yeah. Either screen, either screen, full screen, or this screen. Any, there, there, we there we go. There we go. Nice. So this is in its most simplest form. The sun's always out there. You got the Earth and the Moon comes perfectly in between the two. And this is going to happen to where the Moon completely blocks out the Sun for a little bit and casts its shadow onto a narrow path along the Earth. Now these happen, what, two to five times a year? Mm -hmm. But often it's just out in the, you know, little swath of ocean out in the Pacific, on the Atlantic, somewhere else just in the ocean. But this is unique because it's going over populations of tens of millions of people, you know, where that's, that's the rarity. But you know, anyway, this is the basics of it. Oh, that's our, there we go. <laughs> Adam, Adam, what's the difference between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse? I've heard that question asked a couple Yeah, times. well, the lunar eclipse is basically the opposite. The sun will get between the uh, moon and the um, the Earth, 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 will Earth, Earth, Earth will get between. Earth will get over here. Yes, the Earth would get between the two, cast it, the shadow on the moon. Yeah, yeah that's different. Yeah. Let's not. <laughs> <laughs> that's not this, though. Yeah, that's not this. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's interesting to think, too, is when you talk about how, because this is, you know, so rare, 13.99 and all that, but, you know, to say, yeah, a couple times, two, three, four times a year, somewhere, this yeah, happens. It happens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is one of those other kind of mind-boggling things. Adam, yeah. real quick, can you tell us, I know you had a, a buddy who mm -hmm. experienced a completely clouded out yeah. eclipse. What was that like yeah. for him? Yeah, that was in 1999 in Germany, visiting his wife's cousin. And they went there because he chases Eclipse. They went there for the Eclipse. And it was drizzly and rainy and just kind of a really gray, damp day. And he said, once totality hit, just like a light switch, everything turned to like it's midnight pitch black. Cool. He said the street lights, just everything came on. Animals thought it was just middle of the night. Whereas if you have a clear sky, you know, it's like twilight. Gradual, yeah. yeah it's, it, and it's, it, it's like twilight yeah. out there, but 360 degrees. And you can see more of the sun. He couldn't see the sun but it still had an impact. Did he get a temp drop too? Did uh, he a little bit of one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. a little sense. bit of one, that still happens. Uh, what's also interesting too, there's a lot of research that, you know, our daytime, just regular puffy cumulus clouds, the convective clouds that develop, mm -hmm. you know, they happen in the afternoons, they just start popping up because of the sun heating the ground, and then that in turn lifting the air and creating clouds. When you get total solar eclipse, eclipses along the path, those puffy clouds disappear because oh, they cool. lose the energy from the sun. But this is the time of day where we won't have many of those, and it's not the time of year where we get a lot of those puffy afternoon clouds, which can be a guarantee, you know, in the summertime every day in many parts of the country. But that's just another unique aspect. So yeah. we were being told, we're talking about glasses once Correct. again. Yeah. yeah. So what happens Correct. if you don't wear your glasses? Right. right. And we're, this is a serious situation. Yeah. yeah. He, get a welder's You mask. need an ISO Correct. glasses, and here's what that looks like. The ISO, it's, let's see, did you say we had a picture of that? I just so people I think, can. Yeah, there, there, there we there. go. Okay, so this is there. Uh, well, we've got some glasses just, right here. There it yeah, is, yeah. right ISO. there, ISO. 
if it has that label, it's good to go. ISO, ISO. good to go. <laughs> yeah. We'll get an extreme close up of this thing right here on this on this camera, but that's exactly what it is. Uh, and you got if you're a welder or you you know by trade or just by hobby, you can wear your welder's mask. That Those are too. best for kids. Welder's masks are best for kids because you just slide it over them and then they have to have it on and they, they can't, can't slip off. Because if these glasses, if you're staring at the sun, and it's super cool to look at the full sun with these things on because... You can actually see sunspots. Yes! You, and it's you can so cool. How it's a perfect disc yep. in the sky, which normally, you, you know, yeah. even with... I don't care if you have the coolest, best pit vipers or Maui gyms, not <laughs> enough. Not going to do it. Not going to no. work. Now, with perfect amount of cloud thickness, there would be the chance of being able to view it without glasses. If in that rare instance it happened, we would tell you, but don't expect that. That's a big one. And you here's why, you, here's why. Yep. It's a two lens system and think of it like a magnifying glass. Like when, you know, like when we're all little kids and we go out into the sun and use a magnifying glass to burn a hole in a piece of tissue paper or something like that. We have lenses inside our eye that's doing the same thing. But so not only can you view this using, using these, but let's say you lose them or don't know where they are mm -hmm. or you want an activity for your kids. Mm -hmm. These didn't exist all the time. So how did people view, yeah, how did true. people view the solar eclipse? <laughs> 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 they used pinhole projectors and here's how you can make one yeah, of them. Pinhole projector. Grab your stereo box. Indirect viewing. <laughs> direct viewing. So let's say you want to view the upcoming solar eclipse safely, but you don't have these cool looking glasses. Well, I have got a wonderful science project for you. It's called a pinhole projector. Anybody can do it with some simple materials. Anybody? Anybody. Anybody? Anybody. Even me? Even you. So here's what you're gonna need, David. You're going to need a cereal box or a large snack box. A piece of paper, just white paper. You're going to need tape, scissors, a pencil, aluminum foil, and this is important, Ooh. a push pin. Gotta be careful with those. Don't hurt yourself. Ow. All right, your first step is to trace the bottom of the cereal box onto a piece of paper. Okay, Sarah, what's next? All right, I'm gonna put on my glasses because you know safety oh, first. Safety when it comes first. To the next step is to take tape and put it at tape. the bottom here. <laughs> you are going to take this piece of paper and you're gonna put it all the way down to the bottom of the box. And this piece of paper is essentially going to be the screen that you will project the sun onto. Wow. Awesome. The next step is to cut these small little wings of the top of the box. You only want to leave the middle of the top of the box. These two sides, they're gone. Fancy stuff there. Awesome. First thing we're gonna do is tape the middle of this. So that way, when you tape it, you have two, two openings. Make sure that it's really sealed nice and tight because you don't want to let any light in on one side. No light inside. Right. One side of this is going to have foil on it, and uh -huh. the other side is going to be where your eye goes, okay? <laughs> top one, let's put foil over the top okay. one, okay? <laughs> this ain't working out so there well. We go. <laughs> This is like wrapping a Christmas package. And then you're gonna really want to tape it on all sides okay. so that it is firmly on there. I want you to look into the eye hole and tell me what you see. Can you see me? No, I can't see okay. you. I don't see anything. Exactly. Darkness. Is, I see a lot of darkness. Are you We're there? We're gonna do something where we create a tiny pinhole in the foil that will focus the light and project it on the back of the screen here that we did. Oh, the white piece of paper we put in there? So the last step we do right. is be very careful. Ooh, adult supervision. Get a push pin. Three, two, one. Now that we've got our pinhole projectors assembled, let's go outside. 
So here's how to use your pinhole projector. David is showing this great. You want to make sure your back's toward the sun because again, the sun is going to come through the pinhole and be projected onto the back of your cereal box. So I don't know about you, David, but right now it's a little cloudy, but I can still see the shape of the sun yeah. through the clouds. I see a little peak of sunshine coming through the clouds, but it's enough to where it's it's like illuminating the clouds. So cool. Oh, yeah, there they are. That's how high definition these are wow. so again remember you can never look directly Wait. at the Sun you need those special glasses but this is a great way to get your kids involved to get yourself involved and it's cheaper than those glasses too so maybe have two ways to view it the glasses and this pinhole projector you've yeah. talked to your assistant well uh, he did pretty good yeah. He's yeah. getting there. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to like find the sun because you yeah. know your back is, is, yeah. is it yeah. tough when we're going through it? It is anything? for a little while, but but once you get it, you get it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So just be patient and look. Yep. That's a great, great. An another way to indirect view is shadows. All shadows All will shadows. start getting crescent shaped and smaller, smaller, smaller crescent shape. All shadows will because the sun's being black. Yep. Super yep. cool. Hey, we'll be right back. Welcome back. All right, so we've got a ton of events, rightly so, <laughs> mm -hmm. happening. Very good. Very nice. A ton of events happening here in San Antonio, up into the hill country, really starting this weekend mm -hmm. and lasting all the way through Monday. So we've got a full list that we've been working on for weeks that's up on ksat.com. One of our awesome web producers, Rebecca, did a one-stop shop, everything that you need to know. You can find that, ksat.com slash eclipse. But I mean, it has everything from the Zoos party that they're hosting, UTSA they're what hosting, a Bandera, Kerrville. Music Kerbil. being yes. paired yeah. with the Eclipse, which is cool. It is, it is yeah. going to be pretty, pretty neat. So definitely go check that out if you still need something well, to do. Well, and you know, when the, you're in a big crowd, from what I've heard from a lot of people is like, right when totality hits, there's like a big reaction, you know, and like, mm. yes, but then, you know, it lasts for a while. People don't keep cheer cheering and then it turns very quiet, even wow. with a lot of people and people are just kind of taking it in and it sets in. And this is going to last longer mm. than the one in 2017 when my friends were telling me about it, how the reactions of people, you know, and everybody mm. around them, like some people are getting tears because they're so emotional. I get it. You realize you know? how small you are. Yeah, I so, totally get yeah, it. Back in October, I don't know about y'all, when I was out in New Valley and the skies finally cleared a little bit and yeah. looking up at that, it was, it's, it was an emotional kind there's of a a weird, just, going, There's a connection. That's just, yeah. So yeah. There's an innate human connection there mm -hmm. that's just true. psychologically. There touches, really yeah. is. And I think that we have a question, Colton, about traffic from one of our viewers. Yes. How bad will the traffic be on Interstate 10? And Probably bad. Really need to carry an extra can of gas. How so, bad will the traffic be on I-10? Probably bad. Probably yeah. bad. Just anticipate it to be bad, especially after the eclipse, mm -hmm. right after. Yeah. If you can wait some time, you know, kind of like you're leaving a sporting event, eh, we'll wait, let all the crowd yeah. go, do some tailgating, and then leave. Yeah. yeah, and I believe, so TxDOT obviously is all over the situation. They have been working with a ton of different city and county officials here in Bear County. Oh well, there you Number go. one, just don't wear your eclipse <laughs> glasses while driving people. You can't see anything behind these glasses other than the sun. And, so yeah, don't worry, keep your eyes on the road. Don't be looking at the eclipse. And here's the thing, I know it's going to happen, but don't just pull over to the side of the no, road right. when totality hits. It'll happen, we know it's gonna happen. Please don't. And so if you're out during that time, beware of drivers is yeah. what I'm saying here. 
because people will get distracted. And pedestrians. And just people that yeah. are looking up to the sky, seeing what's happening, especially as the partial eclipse is taking shape even before totality, they're going to be looking up constantly. So. And they're wearing eclipse glasses. They yeah. can't yeah. see anything right. but the sun. So. And we're talking about don't stop on the highway. Don't stop on the highway. Any road. Person. And don't get out of your car. Yeah. You yeah. know, and stand there. Just because, pull off. again, somebody else might be driving along going, Oh, gee, well, you know, like so. when there's fireworks at, right. say, Six Flags and everyone parks at the rim, that kind of thing's going to happen. Uh, and then when but everyone, they have a place ready. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Find a parking spot. Yep. And then when everyone tries to leave, know that it's going to take a while to yeah. disseminate and get everyone out of there. And the can of gas thing? No, don't do a run on gas thing. Just, again, avoid maybe a longer line. You know, you don't yeah. want to go to the grocery store at 4.30 in the yeah, afternoon right. with afternoon rush hour traffic. Get gas tomorrow. Just prepare, prepare ahead of time. And, how much gas do you need to get from Fredericksburg home and back and forth? You know, if you don't, Think or wherever you're right. going, you know, you may not need a full tank. So yeah. just be may not. courteous. So with that being said, just a couple of tips to kind of know before you do hit the roads. If you are planning on viewing it somewhere else besides your backyard, here's a look at what you can do. We are getting closer and closer to the total solar eclipse happening on Monday, April 8th, with thousands of people headed to our area to check it out. Traffic is expected to be an issue and potentially cell phone service too. So here are a few things that you can do to prepare ahead of time. Number one, leave with plenty of time to get to where you need to be and prepare for that traffic. Number two, if you can purchase a parking pass ahead of time, go for it. Regardless on if you can or not, it wouldn't hurt to take some extra cash with you. Number three, print out anything that you would source digitally, like maps, tickets, and other things should cell phone service be affected. Number four, with traffic expected to be one of the main issues, plan on filling up your gas tank in case you find yourself idling for a while. Number five, take any supplies that you think you may need with you, like snacks and drinks, and don't forget your Eclipse glasses. KSAT is your Eclipse authority. We will have live coverage leading up to and through the Eclipse, and for more information, you can always head over to KSAT.com. Glasses. We have a giveaway tomorrow and yes. Friday. Free. Yes, we do. Where y'all at tomorrow? Yes. First one's tomorrow. Favorite, favorite son over here. Whoa. Yes. The Aggies throw that you out and, there. You and Mike, Mike yeah. and Justin, y'all yes. are going to be out. We will be out there. And I was, uh, you know, I should have this on hand, but I was going to pull up the exact address. So. Y'all talk about it. <laughs> you okay, away this this was, today. it was so fun to not only meet people, but to be able to give away raffle prizes, free raffles. Mike was there, our mascot, not this awesome Mike Osterhage, but that, Mike. yeah, <laughs> MIC. Uh, and people were just excited. They were asking us about the uh, forecast. We let them know, you know, it's probably going to be partially blocked, at least uh, somewhat, but it's still going to be a great experience. So we'll be tomorrow, we'll be at uh, 6032 Padre Drive. Drive, Pavilion One. So that's the park area there. Great. The admissions. Join us. And then on yep. Friday. Five to seven. Yes. yes. We're just giving away from five to seven. Now, if you want to get there earlier, you can by 430, but just five to seven, come and go. And then, yes, Friday, I'll be at Ikea. Yeah. So that's, you know, northeast side of town. Right. So Great. we're trying to dev several different places. Oh, Monday. Okay. So Monday, we have got live eclipse coverage happening from 12 to two, we are going to be all throughout uh, San Antonio in the Hill Country. Not only are we going to be live on KSAP, but we're also going to be streaming to your phone. Everywhere you can get KSAP content, we will be. Now, some of us are going, me and I are going to be at a school on the, and northwest, the, north, side. On the northwest side experiencing totality with the kids. Mike will be there with us too, with a mascot, the mascot Mike. Yes, <laughs> that one. Uh, gentlemen, you are going to be we're out in Fredericksburg. Fredericksburg. And we're along 290. Yeah, we're going to be there. We're going to get early. We're going to sort of uh, camp out and uh, we're going to experience it from it. What's going to be a very busy Fredericksburg. I've heard rumors that Bill Nye is going to be in Fredericksburg. Uh, we won't be downtown. No, we will I not. Know a lot of people have set up downtown. Correct. We're going to be kind of outside of the city, but. Um, where totality lasts for up to four and a half, nearly does. four and a half minutes where you guys are at. And, you know, that's the thing about the weather, too. We've been talking about the weather. It could be vastly different depending yep. on where you are. That's the thing about low clouds is they show up in some places and not others. And we won't know basically until the day before yeah, that's which places will be best. And Mike, you are going to be? Going to be at The Rock out there by uh, La Quintera, and that's where UTSA has the event set up out there. Like brain Trust. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, all the, right there. the really, really smart people are going to be out there. And regardless of where you are going to be, we would love to see your pictures, either of the clips, either of your watch party, what you're doing to have fun. You can do this on KSAT Connect. This is of the annular eclipse back in October of 2023, but we got so many awesome pictures 
we'll show your pictures on KSAT, on KSAT.com. It's KSAT Connect. You can find KSAT Connect online and on the Weather Authority app. What are you looking forward to on Monday? I think just experiencing it, really. Just taking it all in and realizing how rare of an event this is for our area, definitely. I am looking forward to that moment of totality, whether it's clear, cloudy, well, it's not going to be clear, whether it's cloudy <laughs> or to partially blocked or totally blocked, I'm looking forward to how people react when it gets dark. I want to see the sun's corona. That's what I yeah. want to see, and I want to see and hear the still and quietness as if it's turning tonight, but it's in the middle of the day. That's what I'm looking forward to. And, and a moment with Justin. It, that too. <laughs> a quiet moment. Uh, listen, it's not hyperbole to say that this is a once in a lifetime yeah. event. Yep. Uh, it truly is. And I'm, I'm so stoked. We've been waiting forever for this. It's going to be incredible. Clouds or not. Uh, and so we're, and we're excited to share it with you. If you're watching us right now, you can watch this on Monday. We'll be the, right there with you. And, and that same reaction that I had back in October, basically, you know, looking up there, it's like, it's just something, you know, beyond control, basically. So, and by, dude, uh, before we go, big shout out to everybody in this newsroom. Thank you, yeah. guys. And you work so hard on all the information that you can get online. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty incredible. We are your yeah. Eclipse Authority. And remember, animals are safe. Like, if you're pregnant, it's not a big deal. Nothing's going to happen. This is just a big shadow. How does an astronaut cut his hair? Eclipse it! <laughs> <laughs>